Personally, I've been having to endure a lot of harsh criticisms regarding the Free Apocrypha PDF archive on the website. Accusations of witchcraft creeping into the church, adhering to false gods, when in reality, intellectually and contextually, these criticisms and smearings have no bearing. And perhaps uh, you could relate to such smearing and defamation that could so easily happen on social media. It's like walking into a library and saying whatever negative content this library contains, the entire library is guilty of doing. It's absolutely ridiculous. Despite the blatant disclaimers and even prophetic prophecies one can discern from plastered right on the homepage of the archive, these criticisms with no bearing still go afly. Now I'm not pointing this out to tear down or criticize or cause drama. I'm bringing this up to make a point and I hope that point sharpens and edifies and discerns and makes aware the body of Christ. Now this irrational and brute even type of behavior we I'm pointing out here actually takes us all the way back to the garden and essentially um, is something we actually inherited from the sin of Adam and Eve. Now let's go to the archive and see what we could actually learn about this. Here we are, we're going to be looking at apocryphal works that may necessarily not be perfect but still hold much, much wisdom, which we could not just learn about biblical history and biblical theology and all that kind of stuff, but um, through this, we could actually learn about ourselves. So here we are in the first book of Adam and Eve. Now here we are in chapter 8, and I would like to focus on verse 2. Then God the Lord said to Adam, When you were under subjection to me, you had a bright nature within you, and for that reason, you could see things far away. But after your transgression, your bright nature was withdrawn from you, and it was not left to you to see things far away, but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. Now, we could already start confirming this in our Bibles, um, in prophecy when we get redeemed. Um, the the, our Bibles say we're going to have the spirit of prophecy, we'll have the knowledge of the Lord, um, all that kind of stuff. But really, I want to focus our attention in the Nag Hammadi scriptures. Now, the Nag Hammadi scriptures actually talk about this in extensive detail, and it's something called forgetfulness. Now, here we are, one of countless examples in the Nag Hammadi scriptures we, have, we are in the Apocryphon, Secret Book of John. Um, Jesus is saying to John um, about the start of humanity, The rulers brought Adam into the shadow of death, so that they might produce a figure again, from earth, water, fire, and the spirit that comes from matter, that is, from the ignorance of darkness and desire and their own phony spirit. This figure is the cave for remodeling the body that these criminals put on the human the fetter of forgetfulness. Adam became a mortal person, the first to descend and the first to become estranged. Now here is just one of many countless other examples in the first apocalypse of James. James is actually speaking to Jesus and says, Rabbi, if they arm themselves against you, then is there no blame? You have come with knowledge that you might rebuke their forgetfulness. You have come with recollection that you might rebuke their ignorance. We can actually discern this truth in Luke 7, 31 through 35 in our Bibles themselves. And Jesus said, To what then shall I liken the men of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace, calling to one another, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came, neither eating or drinking wine, and you say, He has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and a wine-bearer, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. 
Now we all know the scripture, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Guys, the, the fullness of our gospels is to put fig leaves to cover our shame, to produce good figs, to have dominion over our sin nature, clothed with the blood and grace of Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, we must recognize and know our sin nature. And when we learn about and recognize our sin nature, it becomes that much easier to have dominion over it. And and walk in the fullness that Christ has already given us. There's a beautiful example of this in the Gospel of Thomas, saying number three. Jesus said, If those who lead you say to you, See the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, It is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you, and it is outside of you. When you come to know yourselves, then you will become known. And you will realize that it is you who are the sons of the living Father. But if you will not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who are that poverty.